Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Happy holidays! The holidays are officially here after a million lights come on for Light the Way at Incarnate Word. We have the sights and sounds that's coming up. Plus, UTSA football is adding yet another trophy to their collection after a big win against Rice. We'll tell you who they could play in two weeks for that conference USA title. Love to see that. 41 degrees at 6 this morning. Oh my gosh, it was so cold at Light the Way last night. Will we have a repeat day? Maybe minus the rain that we had yesterday. Sarah will let us know in just a bit. Good morning. Happy Sunday. It's 6 a.m. What is today, Alicia? November 20th. 20th. And Alicia is Woo! with us for a girls show this morning. All girls. We are ready. Thanksgiving is just five days away and we're bringing all the energy. Sarah Spivey, good morning. We are bringing all of the energy. I was literally singing, oh, yes, it's ladies show today. And she had a dance. Let me tell you. Well. <laughs> okay, we got to bring the energy this morning because it's cloudy, it's cold outside, and there is still a bit of dampness left over okay. from yesterday. Sarah, not necessarily minus the rain today, but it's actually going to be the opposite. So yesterday it rained a lot in the morning. Mm -hmm. Tonight it's going to rain more than it is mm -hmm. during the day here today in San Antonio. So a bit of an opposite day for us. Outside right now it is cold out there. It's 42 in San Antonio, 39 in Kerrville, 36 in Rock Springs. 43 in Del Rio, 42 in New Braunfels, 43 in Carrizo Springs. A closer view around the neighborhoods here in San Antonio, 41 in Seguin, 37 Bernie, 39 in Comfort and Bandera, 45 in Castroville, and 42 in Yavaldi. You can see there are a few sprinkles out there early this morning, especially on the south side of San Antonio and in Bandera County, as well as on the Medina and uh, Yavaldi County line as well. And, and again, we could still have some sprinkles out there throughout the morning. About 30% coverage are early today until about noon. So don't leave without your rain gear just in case. But notice that it is tonight that we start to see our rain chances go up quite a bit. Pretty much after about 5 o'clock this evening. North winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up, I'm going to show you the future cast. And uh, again, we will have more rain overnight tonight that could impact your morning commute early tomorrow as well. And and when will we see sun? I've got those details in a few minutes. Alicia. Sarah, thank you. San Antonio police say a man was hit and killed by a car overnight while he was walking along Loop 410. It happened just before 1 a.m. on the northwest side. The driver of the car was caught and taken into custody about half a mile from the scene of the accident. The driver was not intoxicated but will be charged with failure to stop and render aid. Topping your morning headlines, five people are dead and 18 others are injured after a mass shooting at a nightclub in Colorado Springs overnight. KKTV in Colorado Springs reports it happened just before midnight at an LGBTQ nightclub. ABC News reports the venue called Club Q described the shooting as, quote, a hate attack, saying it was devastated by the senseless attack on our community. Police say the suspect was injured and is in custody. And a Christmas parade in North Carolina turned tragic Saturday morning. A young girl was hit and killed by a pickup truck after the driver allegedly lost control of the vehicle during the parade. Witnesses say they heard the driver yelling out of his window that he had lost control and couldn't stop. The young girl was taken to a nearby hospital where she died of her injuries. The 20-year-old driver was arrested and is facing several charges, including misdemeanor death by motor vehicle and careless and reckless driving. In your social media news, Elon Musk has reinstated former President Trump's Twitter account. Trump had been banned from Twitter for 22 months since the January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol. Musk, the owner of the new owner of Twitter, said he based his decision on a poll from Twitter users. After 15 million votes, Trump was reinstated by a 52 to 48 percent margin. It's unclear if the former president will use the social media platform again. And Western New York is still battling a historic snowstorm that's causing massive road closures and flight delays. Over six feet of snow have been recorded in places near Buffalo and a state of emergency remains in effect. At least two people have died from cardiac complications related to shoveling snow. 
We're just weeks away from Christmas and the University of the Incarnate Word officially kicked off the holiday season with their 36th annual Light the Way Holiday Festival. Uh, on my way, this serves as my commute, so the twinkling lights is always one of my favorite so parts. So beautiful. It's worth it. So the college serves as the center of the South Texas holiday tradition. Hundreds of people filled the campus Saturday. Uh, staff and volunteers hung one million lights across the university. More than 50 food and shopping vendors, of course, were also part of the festivities. People who spoke to KSAT say this year's event was unforgettable. I've been coming to Light the Way every single year since I was three years old and bringing my daughter here and letting her watch all the lights turn on, it's, it's amazing. It definitely felt like the Christmas spirit because it's cold outside, obviously, and uh, all the lights just brought a lot of joy. And if you missed it last night's event, or if you missed last night's event, don't worry. The lights will be up through early January, so we still have a lot of holiday cheer. Alicia, I went to this event last night. Our Steve Spreester was the MC. I was kind of nervous because, you know, I decided to go last minute because of the kind of drizzle we had yep. all day and it was really mm -hmm. cold. And I was like, oh, no, no one's showing up. There wasn't a lot of people. And then all of a sudden, bam, everyone was there. The lights turned on. I was like, oh, and I saw a marriage proposal. No way. I was walking and I told my husband. That's I like, romantic. I go, oh, this would be such a great place to get proposed to. And, and then you spoke it into existence. Literally, like, two seconds later, the guy gets down on his knee and I'm just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And it's going to be like that all holiday season. So we're excited about the, the holiday lights are back. They're back. It's 606 and 41 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, everything is bigger in Texas, and that includes the world's largest Bucky's. How the small town of Lilling is getting ready for it. After the break, UTSA isn't the only football team in the Alamo City that's winning trophies. How about the UIW Cardinals? They are rolling into the playoffs. That in just moments. And taking a live look with live cam right now, what a beautiful skyline, 41 degrees. It is cold out there, but things look way better than they did yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. UTSA football kept their hot streak going this weekend with their eighth straight win. This time, they, they won against Rice down in Houston. Since losing two games back in September, the Roadrunners have been doing great. Haven't lost in two months. Star quarterback Frank Harris put on a show in the first half with a 63-yard touchdown run. UTSA, UTSA would be up big at halftime, 28-0. Rice would get on the board with a late touchdown, but Harris would score three times on the ground to go with two touchdown throws, powering the Roadrunners to a blowout win. UTSA cruises 41-7. They will host the Conference USA title game for the second straight season. I mean, it's a lot, you know, getting back to back. You know, it's hard to come by, especially once and getting it twice. It uh, means a lot for us, the program, the city, university, all of that. So definitely blessed and, uh, you know, we don't take it lightly. Frank Harris just, you know, early, he, he just won't be denied, man. You can just feel it. And uh, what a blessing that we've kept him healthy. I mean, you know, he's, he's making up for a lot of kids that are, out there not playing, but man, he was special. And here's Coach Trailer holding that Conference USA regular season championship trophy. The regular season finale, finale is next Saturday at 2.30 in the Dome, and they're up against UTEP. The Roadrunners will host a Conference USA title game on Friday, December 2nd. They're expected to play either North Texas or Western Kentucky. Incarnate Word has wrapped up its regular season in a big, big way after a road win against Northwestern State. Quarterback Lindsey Scott threw five touchdowns on the day as the Cardinals cruise to a 66 to seven win. They're now back to back to Southland Conference champions. They'll find out today at 1130 who they'll be playing first in the FCS playoffs, which starts next weekend. And speaking of playoffs for the first time since 2011, Trinity hosted a Division III playoff football game. They took on the Hardin-Simmons in the first round in cold, windy conditions. The Tigers trailed seven to zero at halftime, but Got things going in the second half. Trinity scores two touchdowns in the final two quarters, and they hang on to win 14 to seven. It's Trinity's first playoff win in 20 years. It means everything. It means everything just to come out here and to advance one more week because we've been working all season long. We've been working since January 31st. We set the goals on the board to win a playoff game. We just did it today. It's a team effort. It's incredible. You know, the school's been behind us and from the beginning as we've tried to rebuild this thing. Um, so thankful to be here doing what we're doing with these great young men at, at our great institution and to do it in front of our fans. It's just really special. 
go Tigers. Trinity will face the defending national champions Mary Harden Baylor in the second round this next Saturday. The Tigers lost to the Crusaders in the first round of last year's playoffs. Hey, congratulations to all of our local teams making us proud out there. Doing it big. All right, those trophies, those wins. We're proud of you guys. Congratulations. And in football weather, too. Oh, my goodness. Chilly so cold. and cold for all of those Texas teams. Oh, my goodness. And even some rain yesterday as well, especially during the first part of the day. Now, we're going to have the opposite today where there's only a few light rain showers out there right now. But later on in the later evening, uh, pardon me, in the later afternoon, evening and overnight hours, that's when we're going to see more rain around San Antonio, but we do have some passing showers right now. Let's go ahead and zoom into San Antonio and Bear County in the southern part of the county here right near uh, Bronig Lake and Mitchell Lake. You can see that there's a light rain shower pushing east across 281. These are very light rain showers, perhaps even only sprinkles out there. We've got another one in north uh, north of Hondo in Medina County and near Bandera as well. And I do not want to forget our friends out west in Valverde County. As we take a look at the radar here uh, closer to Del Rio, you can see that across parts of northern Valverde County, we're actually dealing with some heavier rain, perhaps even some sleet mixed in with that light rain up there uh, in parts of northern uh, Valverde County. But we're not worried about any kind of icy precipitation around San Antonio today. Most of that area uh, is ranch land anyway, just getting a good drink of water there. Speaking of good drink of water, we got half an inch of rain yesterday in San Antonio. That's pretty nice to see that. And tonight we'll be getting even more rain. Here's a look the weather setup. You can see very clearly that there is a dip in the atmosphere right here over parts of Arizona and New Mexico. This is a trough of low pressure. It's going to be pushing east throughout the day today. As you can see, there's quite a bit of wintry precipitation across parts of West Texas, Fort Stockton, Marathon, Ozona, starting to see some of this uh, icy wintry mix. Now again, we are not anticipating any kind of icy wintry mix, but if you have to head west along I-10 today, know that those roads could be impacted uh, by this icy uh, icy weather, especially out west toward Fort Stockton in Ozona. But again, this is going to be pushing to the east throughout the day today. So as we look at our future cast again this morning into the afternoon, early afternoon, only a few light passing rain showers. It's going to be cold. Temperatures are going to be in the 40s. Snapshot at 2 p.m. about 30 percent coverage of the light rain. But as we head into the later afternoon hours closer to sunset, you'll notice that coverage does increase to about 50 percent 5 p.m today uh, and then as we head into the later evening hours toward nine o'clock again about 50 percent chance for coverage of those showers then overnight after midnight, even more coverage, 70% showers uh, around San Antonio in the overnight hours while we're sleeping. Nature's sound machine for us, nice rain on the wind windshields out there in the overnight hours. But what I really want you to pay attention to is by the morning commute tomorrow, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, we're still going to have more widespread showers early tomorrow morning. You know how it is in the morning when you're driving and there's a little bit of rain out there. We end up having quite a bit of crash around San Antonio. So give yourself a little extra time to get to where you need to go. It's going to be damp, cold, blustery on Monday morning during the morning commute. Then during the afternoon on Monday, we're going to see coverage decrease pretty substantially. So today, better rain chances tonight and Monday, better rain chances in the morning. And then by the evening on Monday, we'll see all that rain out of here and we may even actually start to see the clouds break apart late Monday night, which would be the first time in quite some time. But outside right now, it's cloudy. It's 42 degrees out there right now with winds from the north at 10 miles per hour. It feels like it's in the 30s. We're going to have a wind chill all day long today. 39 in Kerrville, 36 in Rock Springs. It's 43 in Del Rio, 40 in Catula. Good morning in Pleasanton, where it's 44 degrees, 42 in Gonzales, and 42 in New Braunfels. As I mentioned, winds will not be as strong as yesterday, but we are going to have a wind uh, at about uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And so throughout the day today, wind chills likely going to be in the 30s. As for your KSAT 12 hour forecast, again, not much coverage there on the rain this morning. We'll be looking at temperatures only warming up into the mid 40s today, 45 degrees during the daytime. And then in the afternoon, that's when we'll start to see our rain chances 
pick up just a little bit. 45 degrees for the high temperature today. Tomorrow, again, overnight tonight and through tomorrow morning, we're going to have more widespread rain. Seeing a little bit more sunshine on Tuesday, but still cool with temperatures only in the 50s, 60s on Wednesday. And Thursday for Thanksgiving, there are still some questions on the timing of that cold front and whether or not it's going to be bringing any rain. But this is our best educated forecast right now. Uh, as for Thanksgiving, you're going to want to keep on tuning in as we refine that forecast. And I'll have more on Thanksgiving coming up in the next half hour. At least it's not going to be 80 degrees for Thanksgiving. Hey, yes, and yes. that's what I was nervous about. I'm like, we could go back. So it's it good that we're staying, we could always we're staying go back. a little cool. Right. And a lot of people that. have travel plans on Thursday on the the road, those kinds of things. So yeah, we'll keep you updated. Thank you, Sarah. It's 618 and 41 degrees. Up next before 630, Bucky's is everyone's favorite part of a road trip, is it not? But have you ever wondered what it takes to build one? What one small town is doing to get ready for a big new store? Welcome back. We've all heard the saying everything's bigger in Texas and now a new 75,000 square foot Bucky's is definitely proving it. We love to see this. The new store is under construction in Luling. It will be slightly larger than the Bucky's that's in Tennessee that currently holds the record for the world's largest convenience store. There's already a Bucky's in Luling, but that was built 20 years ago. But the new mega Bucky's will be over double that size and the workforce. And for those jobs are those jobs are a big town for the big deal for those small town customers like Kelly Wayne Scott says they can't wait for more of everything. The beaver nuggets are, are huge. Um, we love the, the brisket sandwiches, plus the shopping. This one needs to be lar larger because of the uh, traffic coming in and out uh, for travelers. She's excited for the beaver nuggets. Lilling's current store will stay open until the new Bucky's is built next door. Construction will take about 16 months before Texas can take on those bragging rights again, take him away from Tennessee as the biggest Bucky's in the country. I knew you especially were worried about that earlier. She said it's Texas. Texas. We, we everything should. is bigger and better here in Texas. And we you should, are right. We should have the biggest Bucky's. We're Texas. It's back. We're going to get that title back. Time right now, 623, 41 degrees. Up next before 630, the cost of dating has gone up a <laughs> lot. In the, at least just chuckling the past 10 years. And not just emotionally. We'll explain why it's affecting your wallet in just a moment. The holidays are here and embracing the single life may be a bummer for romance. This story sounds so upsetting, but it has big advantages for your wallet. All right. A new study says dating costs more than ever. The Singles in America report this week says daters are spending about 40 percent more trying to woo someone compared to 10 years ago. That breaks down to get this $130 every month, which does not surprise me. Inflation, of course, is the main culprit, and the added cost isn't just about dinner and a movie. It has changed the criteria of those looking for partners sharing similar spending habits, being frugal, and financial stability are all becoming top-tier needs. So it's not just good looks anymore. So when you go on your first dates now, you have to talk about, like, your budget? Well, okay, so I am actively dating TMI, but... <laughs> I mean, if I if I read on those dating apps that like love to try new restaurants every week, I'm like, uh, -uh. no left. Yeah. Nope. Not, let's, not let's here. Get some I'm going to say, yeah, like hey. let's save some money. I don't, I don't, or a walk in the park, you know, something. I love that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that. So there are <laughs> options. You guys do not get discouraged. There's still hope. All right. 627 and 41 degrees. Still ahead at 630. The FIFA World Cup starts today. We'll tell you when you could see Team USA hit the field. Salvation Army making sure children in need get a present under the tree with its Angel Tree program. How you can help out. That's next. Good morning. It's 6.30 on Sunday, November 20th. 
It is morning. such <laughs> a lovely day to have Alicia oh, in studio I, with us. I thought you were going to talk about the weather right no, away. I was the like, it is a lovely, lovely. morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy. I'm happy. It's happy to be here. I am happy to be here. And coffee is still kicking in. You went to a concert time. last night. I did. Girl, talk, yeah. Tell us about it. Grupo Firme, a huge Mexican band. Um, I love Mexican regional music. It, it was amazing. Packed house at the Alamo Dome. Lots of traffic. Had to walk a long way in the cold, but I was prepared, bundled Good. up so I could be here today and not be sick. And I am it, it so was happy you made it because I, I think yeah. you posted what last night, like at midnight. Yeah. But hey, well this, worth is, this is why she, she she loves GMSA and she's here. I way to, to go, Alicia. For the girl team today. Yes, that's right. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies represent, okay. Outside right now though, it is cold. It's 42 degrees, cloudy out there with winds from the north at 10 miles per hour. It feels like it's 38 degrees. One thing I want you to take a note of is take a look at the dew point. Dew points are in the 20s. That is chapstick weather, okay, very dry. Temperatures are some 15 to 20 degrees above the dew point. That's a lot of dry air at the surface. So although we're seeing some returns on the radar, like out near uh, Medina Lake, up in Bandera County and on the south side of San Antonio. A lot of that are just sprinkles, so right? very, very light rain. And today we're going to have a bit of an opposite day than yesterday. It's still going to be cold. That's the same. But yesterday we had a lot of rain in the morning and not so much in the evening. Today we're going to have the opposite. Not much rain in the morning, but in the evening we'll be seeing our rain chances really tick up. And that'll lead to a damp commute tomorrow morning. We'll show you the future cast here in a bit. And another cold day in the 40s. But in the week ahead, by Thanksgiving, we'll have some sun. There's still a question, though, about rain for Black Friday and Thanksgiving itself. I'll tackle all of these headlines coming up in just a few minutes in the full forecast. Alicia, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Several people are in San Antonio police custody this morning after being detained when police responded to a shots fired call near downtown. It happened around noon near McCullough and East Euclid. Police arrived at a large detached garage and found shell casings and multiple guns. That's when the suspects were detained. Police say one of the men admitted to firing those shots from inside the garage. No injuries were reported. And Crime Stoppers and San Antonio police are looking for information leading to the suspect accused of killing a man in front of his own in his own front yard. 48 year old Cornelius Brown died back on November 12th at his home on Castle Guard near Riddiman and Eisenhower Roads. SAPD says Brown and a neighbor were sitting outside when the suspect allegedly shot at them multiple times and then ran off. The neighbor survived. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210 224 7867. Top story we've been following this morning, a tragic crash involving a young girl who died after being hit by a pickup truck during a Christmas parade. It happened Saturday morning in North Carolina, and as ABC's Christine Sloan reports, the driver is now facing several charges. As police investigate the death of a young girl struck and killed by a pickup truck after it lost control at a Christmas parade, witnesses are speaking out. Yeah, it was moving kind of fast, slowed down, looked like a lot of people. They did a really good job responding. Getting, it was pretty scary. Like, I mean, we, we moved back, uh, tried to get out of the way, um, but they had it handled by the time they came to stop. The vehicle was pulling a float carrying members of the CCN company dance troupe. The victim was one of the dancers performing in front of the truck. Witnesses say they heard the driver yelling out his window that he had lost control and couldn't stop. And you can tell it was not like gas, like they weren't gassing. It was rolling, kind of rolling down the street, and they were kind of freaking out, yelling at people, get out of the way. Like, you can tell they were panicking. People could be seen on video scattering as the truck continued to move forward. Police and several other bystanders jumping in front, bringing it to a standstill. The young girl taken to a nearby hospital where she died of her injuries. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper tweeting, In a joyous season on what should be a happy day, we instead mourn for this family and their friends as we keep them in our prayers. Police say the driver, 20-year-old Landon Christopher Glass, was arrested and charged with several counts, including misdemeanor death by motor vehicle, careless and reckless driving, and carrying a firearm in a parade. Following the incident, the parade was immediately canceled. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. 
Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner is a decades-long tradition in San Antonio, and it's returning to the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center this year for the first time since the pandemic hit. This year marks the 43rd anniversary of the event, the, a meal aimed at helping thousands of people across our community. Today on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Raul Jimenez III joins us to talk about the growth of the dinner being back in person and how you can get involved and what to expect. You know, when volunteer slots opened immediately, I mean, just in minutes they were filled. So that's amazing to see our community stepping up and hopefully now with donations and again with time. I love to see that. Okay, 637 and 41 degrees. Still ahead on JMSA, the World Cup. It starts today, but the U.S. and Mexico won't hit the field just yet. We'll tell you when and when you can watch them play. Plus, the Salvation Army making sure children in need get a present under the tree with its angel program. How you can help out, that's next. And taking a live look with live cam. Sarah talked about clouds earlier. Perhaps it's a little hard to pick up here, but a beautiful skyline nonetheless for this chilly Sunday morning. This morning, the empty shelves some stores had over the last two holiday seasons may be a thing of the past. Major retailers say their supply chains are finally almost back to normal, just in time for Black Friday. Walmart says it secured extra inventory of products for the holidays from electronics to home appliances. The same is true over at a favorite target. Unlike last year, the retailer is able to roll out deep holiday discounts. Once again, stores say demand will be the main issue this year. And since the 1970s, the Salvation Army has been making sure children in need get a present under the tree with its Angel Tree program. This year, San Antonio's chapter hopes to bring home holiday cheer to 4,000 kids and 500 seniors. I visited with one of the many Angel Trees around town, and here's how you can help out. The Christmas trees are decorated, and these angels have been hung up waiting to be adopted for the holidays. We do it um, to provide joy for Christmas um, for families that are low income, for families that you know struggle to make ends meet all year round. It doesn't matter that we know that Christmas is coming when you live on a fixed budget. Um, they struggle to make ends meet and they want to have joy in their home too on Christmas. The Salvation Army San Antonio's area commander Ashley Robinette says they hope to help 4,500 children, infants to 12 years old, and seniors this December that come from households that aren't able to afford Christmas. So they're extremely thankful on the days when they come and they pick up the gifts. Sometimes, you know, they might be in tears um, over the amount of gifts that are given for their kids. This is a 100% donor driven program. You can find the Angel Tree program at area Walmart and Sam's Club, North Star Mall, Ingram Park Mall and South Park Mall or by going to SalvationArmySATX.org. On the Angels will be the age of the child or senior, their clothing size, and some gifts on their wish list. Keep the gifts unwrapped, bag them with the angel tag on it, and return it to one of these locations on your screen. Um, a lot of times we hear stories from like that from our donors. Sometimes it's somebody who was a recipient of the Angel Tree program as a child, and now they're in a position where they're able to give back, and so they want to come and they want to take an angel off the tree because somebody helped them when they were a kid. And our team at GMSA wants to adopt a couple of these angels. So I was able to pick out some of those angels and one senior. We brought them back to our newsroom. We're going to go shopping and we'll get those bags ready to return them to Salvation Army downtown by December 11th. Uh, really, it was really heartwarming yeah, when you absolutely. see what they, what they want, especially the senior who is 88 years old and just wanted like a blender and a blanket. Wow. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, the gifts from the community to these families that are in need make a huge, huge difference. So I hope people at home will take the time to adopt an angel tree this year. Absolutely. And it's feeling like the holidays. Oh, Sarah. really? We're not, it it's not even Thanksgiving yet. I know. And we're already dealing with temperatures some 20 degrees cooler than average out there today. Take a look at the radar, though. Unlike yesterday, we really only have a few light rain showers out there. Mostly this is uh, sprinkled. These are sprinkles, too. Well, you can see out near Medina Lake right now, right over the lake and also FM 120, uh, one, two, eight, three. There we go. It's still, still waking up this morning. We're seeing some of that light rain. This is going to be pushing to the east here. So areas in Holotus will be seeing this shower fairly 
soon. Now keep in mind that uh, these are really just sprinkles. So if they hold on, it could make it to the Stone Oak area by about 722. If it holds on, it could make it to Shavno Park by about 715. Otherwise, though, we're really only looking at some of these light rain showers around San Antonio this morning. We will see rain, however, pick up later on this evening. Take a look out to the hill country right now over Kerrville uh, in Kerr County. We've got some of these showers too, and I want to show you that with the radar that's closer to Del Rio and Brackettville, a little bit better view here. You can see more moderate rain falling in northern Kerr County uh, and uh, some more moderate rain falling in northern Edwards County as well. Around San Antonio, though, really just an overcast start to the day. It is 42 degrees with gusts from the north up to about 15 to 20 miles per hour. It feels like it's 38, though, with that wind chill. Again, not very damp out there at the moment, but we will be seeing that change overnight. Uh, later on tonight and in the overnight hours. 42 in San Antonio, 42 in New Braunfels, 43 in Del Rio, and 44 in Pleasanton. It's cold, but you are you ready to feel better about our situation? Take a look across the state of Texas. It's in the teens in Amarillo and in the Panhandle, below freezing in Dallas, Fort Worth, and at Alpine in West Texas. Speaking of West Texas, that's where we're actually getting some wintry precipitation right now. There's a dip in the atmosphere, low pressure system that's going to be moving across Texas today. And this is the reason why our rain chances are going to increase later in the day, because as this low gets closer, Closer to us, we'll be seeing showers and storms start to increase. But again, right now, along I-10 out west, it is a little messy on those roads from Ozona to Fort Stockton because of the wintry precipitation. Let me take you through the future cast. Again, during the day today, we're really not going to see all that much rain. Perhaps some light rain showers. Temperatures are going to be in the 40s. Coverage is only going to be about 30 percent. But later on this evening, right around 5 o'clock, close to sunset, we'll start to see coverage increase as that low pressure gets closer. About 50% coverage there around San Antonio. About 50% coverage through about 9 p.m. Even more rain expected in the overnight hours. Widespread light to moderate rain showers. About 70% coverage on the map. That'll continue into the morning commute tomorrow. So plan accordingly if you have an early morning commute. Luckily, a lot of the kids are out of school, but if you have to go uh, to work tomorrow morning, know that it is is going to be a pretty rainy and damp start to the day and cold too. However, by Monday afternoon, most of the rain will be pushing off to the east. Coverage will be about 30% and will turn off the tap in the evening hours. But tomorrow it is going to be another cold day with temperatures only in the 40s. So to break down your rain chances again today during the day, 30 to 40% coverage, not all that much, but tonight about 70% coverage Monday, 70% coverage in the morning, but drop throughout the day so that Monday night we really won't be seeing any more rain in San Antonio, at least for the time being. So just to summarize everything today, a fairly quiet start today. You may run into some sprinkles through noon and temperatures are only going to top off right around 45 degrees. Then later tonight, particularly after 4 p.m., we'll start to see our rain chances increase, coverage increase. Winds today are going to be from the north at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Let's take a sneak peek at Thanksgiving, all right? There are still a lot of questions as to whether or not we're going to be seeing rain and the timing of this front on Thursday. But what the consensus is right now is it should be a little warmer. Temperature should be in the 60s and with the front arriving a, a brief opportunity for rain here. But please continue to check back in with the forecast as we refine that forecast for Thanksgiving and for Black Friday. A lot of people going to be out on the roads on Thanksgiving Day itself, traveling to uh, various locations and especially on Black Friday too, trying to get those deals. So we'll have a better idea of what to expect toward the end of the week as we get closer to Thanksgiving itself, but at least it's not going to be in the 40s and damp outside. So there's that. Yeah, that wasn't fun yesterday. You know, it's fun if you want to enjoy some time inside. Did you do Stay your Christmas weather. decorations yesterday? I did it because somebody, I will not name him, Who's forgot this? Oh, to yeah. go to oh. the uh, storage unit. But oh, your husband? Fine. Okay. <laughs> I love you. I love you, husband. <laughs> <laughs> it is the perfect time to start putting up those Christmas decorations. And for me, I'm looking forward to Fidel. That's what I've been craving. I know oh, usually Fidel, it's like yes. a tea or whatever holiday drink. But for me right now, it's just Fidel.
I'm going to make some warm stuff. I can't. I'll go buy some. Same, same. <laughs> All right, 649 and 41 degrees. Let's take a look outside with the roads with Transguide. Not a lot of people up this morning, probably staying snuggled in bed watching us on GMSA under a warm blanket. Hey, if any incidents pop up around the road, we'll let you know about them. All right, Sarah, you're going to have to help me with this because I'm never good with lottery. Pick three, seven, six, nine, and then it's fireball three. Mm -hmm. Very confident. <laughs> Daily four, the numbers are six, nine, three, three. Fireball nine. Cash five, two, 13, 14, 15, 21. Texas Lotto, eight, 10, 18, 24, 29, 48. Powerball seven, 28, 62, 63, 64. Powerball 10, power play three. Good luck. Welcome back. No Shave November is in full swing, and you've probably seen a big change on some of the guys here at KSAT. Everyone has a reason for participating, and my co-anchor, Max Massey, he's off this weekend, but here's what he had to say about why he's doing it. Why I do No Shave November. Cancer has affected so many of my family members and so many of my friends and the people I care about. So to just put the razor down for a month to help raise awareness and raise money, it means so much to me. We can raise money not only to help find a cure, but to help local families who are going through the unimaginable. Okay, we're going to take a look at this leaderboard. Mike Osterhage has been in the lead this entire time. Wow. Um, Props to RJ and Jonathan Colto. They've moved their way up. I want to give a shout out to Max Massey, who is not here this weekend. And I feel because he hasn't been here the last two weekends that, you know, he hasn't gotten that no shave November love. So this is a, a that was a little hopefully encouragement for you at home to help out <laughs> our Max Massey. Uh, he's off this weekend, like Sarah mentioned, but Let's support him and all the other gentlemen for KSAT. Check out this QR code. This will take you to our No Shave page on KSAT.com. There you can learn more and, of course, how to donate. Yeah, I'm, I just want somebody, It's because it, it's all for a good cause and mm -hmm. I love a good competition. Yeah. I want somebody to beat Mike Osterhage. Let's do it. Let, who are we rooting for? Should we, we should root for Max. 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 We should Max. Heard, Max. 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 Um, Max. Somebody the other day said Mike Osterhage with his beard, and he was dressed like super preppy, looked like the good-looking dad out of a Hallmark movie. And, well, that's his favorite because right? he lives for Hallmark movies. <laughs> and he was like, my day's been made. I will say, all the guys look really good they with their good. beards. They I wish good. they could keep them year-round. That'd be I think some of them are trying to. Yeah, they're trying to convince <laughs> the bosses right now. All right, time right now, 655, 41 degrees. Here's what's coming up at 7 on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, breaking overnight, a deadly shooting at a Colorado Springs nightclub. At least five killed, more than a dozen injured. A suspect now in police custody and under medical attention. What we're learning this morning. Plus, GOP leaders gathering in Las Vegas, looking ahead to 2024, with Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis in the spotlight. And new information about former President Trump's Twitter account, once banned, now reinstated. And preparing for the holiday travel run the warning from major airlines and timing your trip to the gas station with millions expected on the roads. It's all ahead here on GMA. Welcome back. Before you go this morning, the FIFA World Cup starts today. Host Nation Qatar and Ecuador face off today at 10 a.m. And that's the first of 64 matches across the next four weeks. So there's a lot, a lot of soccer. The U.S. plays tomorrow at 1 p.m. for their opening match against Wales and Mexico. Mexico plays Poland at 10 a.m. on Tuesday for their opening game, which is sure to be really, really good. <laughs> Looking forward to that. It is chilly out there right now, and we've got some light rain sprinkles up on the northwest side of town right now, just about crossing I-10. Up toward Kerrville, seeing some of that light rain as well. The passing f sprinkles are possible through about noon, only about 30% coverage there, but we really will start to see rain chances pick up after 4 p.m. and into the overnight hours. High temperature today, only 45, so it's going to be cold all day long with a bit of dampness out there. Tonight, more shadows hours into the morning commute tomorrow, so please plan accordingly. Another damp day tomorrow, high of only 45. We'll see a little sun Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures will warm up into the 60s by Thanksgiving. Still a lot of questions for the Thanksgiving forecast. We'll keep you updated. Sarah Spivey, thank you. Alicia, always a pleasure. We'll be back at 8 a.m.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, we're tracking new details of a deadly shooting overnight at a nightclub in Colorado. What police are saying now about the suspect. Plus, how a nationwide nonprofit is helping recruits from the Air Force and Space Force feel more at home. Taking a look outside with live cam, 41 degrees at 8 o'clock this morning. Ooh, another chilly start. But will we have that early morning rain like we saw yesterday? Sarah, let us know in just a bit. So far, so good. Right? <laughs> good morning. It's 8 o'clock on this Sunday, November 20th. Can you believe it? We're just days away from Thanksgiving now. I know. November has flown by. We also have Alicia in the house this good morning, morning for a ladies show. Max Massey has the weekend off, well deserved, so I'm happy to step in and help. Happy to have you here, Alicia. And Sarah, so you were saying that, you know, we had those showers early in the day yesterday. It's going to be the opposite today. That's exactly right. So although it's going to be cloudy and cold all day long today, we are going to be seeing better rain chances in the evening as opposed to yesterday when we saw better rain chances in the morning. And yeah, it's cold to start the day. Good morning in Kerrville. It's 39 degrees, 42 in New Braunfels, 44 in Del Rio, 42 in Uvalde, 44 in Pleasanton and 42 in Gonzales. As we take a closer neighborhood view around San Antonio, we've got 40 in Seguin, 42 Converse area, 43 in Divine, 42 in Uvalde, 36 in Lost Maples, and 38 in Bandera. Now, as we look at the radar, there are some light rain showers up near Kerrville, some sprinkles up there in Kirk County, and in Wilson County, uh, nearer to Sutherland Springs, we've got some sprinkles as well there in Wilson County, but it's a fairly quiet start on the radar around San Antonio. And until about noon, we could have some sprinkles out there, perhaps Perhaps a light rain shower coverage is only going to be about 20%, but notice how rain chances increase, especially after 4 p.m. today. In the overnight hours, we're going to have widespread light to moderate rain. Coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about that moderate rain and whether or not it's going to impact your morning commute tomorrow, as well as detail the chilly day ahead. Again, 45, that's it for the high temperature today, and wind chills will be in the 30s, much colder than average, and more on that rain chance coming up in just a bit. Alicia, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And San Antonio police say a man was hit and killed by a car overnight while he was walking along Loop 410. It happened just before 1 a.m. on the northwest side. The driver of the car was caught and taken into custody, but it happened about half a mile from the scene of the crash. The driver was not intoxicated, but will be charged with failure to stop and render aid. Five people are dead and 18 others are injured after a mass shooting at a nightclub in Colorado Springs overnight. KKTV in Colorado Springs reports it happened just before midnight at an LGBTQ nightclub. ABC News reports the venue called Club Q described the shooting as a hate attack, saying it was, quote, devastated by the senseless attack on our community. Police say the suspect was injured and is now in custody. And a Christmas parade in North Carolina turned tragic this weekend. A young girl was hit and killed by a pickup truck. It happened Saturday morning and witnesses say they heard the driver yelling out his window that he couldn't stop the vehicle. Police say three people were in the pickup truck, which was pulling a float with numerous people on it. The young girl was taken to a nearby hospital where she died of her injuries. The 20 year old driver was arrested and is facing several charges, including misdemeanor death by motor vehicle and careless and reckless driving. A nationwide nonprofit organization and the community came together to assemble 6,000 care packages for local Air Force and Space Force recruit gra graduates. It happened Saturday at St. Philip's College. The care packages contained snacks, hygiene products, and handwritten letters from people across the country <laughs> who were writing to express their gratitude to the graduates for serving their country. You think about it, uh, it they're, they're away from home. And just to have something to take with them uh, to their next uh, mission is uh, grateful. I think they're very grateful. After the care packages are made, they will get distributed to the graduates on a weekly basis. Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner is a decades long tradition here in San Antonio and it's returning to the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center this year for the first time since the pandemic. This year marks the 43rd anniversary of the event with a warm meal aimed at helping 
thousands of people across our beautiful community. And in today's leading essay, Max Massey sat down with Raul Jimenez III to talk about what goes into this dinner, but of course, how others can help out as well. Raul, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, the Jimenez dinner has been so important for our community for so long. You know, why is it important to your family and how did it all get started? Yeah, so for our family, uh, my grandfather back in 1979 decided that he had so much support from the community, you know, the patrons going in and out of the restaurant. And he realized that there was a need. Um, you know, back in the day, it was very hard to travel. So there was a lot of people, senior citizens that were left behind on holidays. So he wanted to do something for the people that supported him. And we've just kind of morphed into what we are today. Uh, we don't turn anyone away. And it's just, you know, it, it's it's good for the soul. And it's just, you know, part of doing kind things for kind people and giving back starting the holiday season up, right? You guys have obviously grown the the organization and the event year after year after year. You know, is there ever going to be a limit of how many people you can help? I'll tell you what, my grandfather started out with about 200 people. We've morphed into about 25,000 people. Uh, our, our motto is we want to never turn anybody away. We realize that there's people that are less fortunate. We realize there's disabled military vets, displaced vets. Uh, you know, we, we live in a world that kind of moves around so fast uh, that we just want to always, you know, be able to serve and serve our community. Uh, and this event is very, you know, inspirational because we're able to create memories and it's just part of our normal day to day. Uh, you know, we, we just love what we do and we're loved and blessed the city for helping us out day in and day out. So obviously, the last few years, our community and, you know, the world dealing with COVID. How are you guys able to pivot and still help people out? Sure. So our mission continued uh, when we went through the first COVID, we did outbound meals. Uh, so we were able to deliver 12,000 meals to doorsteps. Last year, we we upped it a little bit to where we were able to get to 15,000 meals. Uh, but, you know, once we realized that, you know, the need was there, we, we made sure that the mission continued. And we're super thrilled to be back in the convention center. We're ready to see all the dancing, all the smiley faces and just get back to the roots of why we created this and why the city supported it for so many years. Uh, we're just super grateful and so blessed to have the city behind us. Obviously, dinner is coming up. <laughs> You know, how can people step up and help out? Sure. So uh, we, we are super grateful. We get about 5,000 volunteers annually uh, to help us out. Uh, so it's from all walks of life. But what's really amazing about this um, this event is there's a lot of people that came here because they had bad luck once upon a time. Uh, but there was a place for them. It was a community dinner table that we had. And now they continue to donate their time. Uh, they found it as a way to rebuild and, and to create hope. And how, how how better to start out the holiday season with giving and, and you know, coming from a kind place. Uh, I think it's always better to serve than take. Uh, and we just always believe that, you know, we're here for that reason. And, you know, we so we get the support for the city. We get the support from our community. Uh, if anyone wants to volunteer, they can obviously come down to the convention center. We don't turn anyone away like we had mentioned before. Uh, it's just an honor to continue the tradition going into our 43rd year where we hope to feed 25,000 San Antonians. All right. And if anyone is interested, you know, maybe someone has friends or family who's watching right now. You know, how can they direct them to the dinner? Absolutely. So we obviously have the dinner on Thanksgiving Day. So come all, come on. Hey, we're all going to be there. Uh, we don't turn anybody away. The doors are open around 830-ish. Uh, and then we'll start seating people and getting the music. Uh, the mass will start. The music will start. And the next thing you know, we're having a big old feast. Uh, a feast of the heart is what we call it. Just kind of giving back to San Antonio and saying thank you for all that they've done for us. And just continue the tradition. All right, Raul, thank you so much for your time today. If anyone missed any part of the interview, or if anyone wants to hear more information, how to help out, how to take part, we're going to have all that information on KSAT.com. Raul, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Max, thank you so much. Anyone who needs any of that information, we can find it later on KSAT.com. You know, these meals, Alicia, they were delivered the last two years. Yep. But I think the importance of this dinner is not just a warm meal, but also that connection. Absolutely. I mean, to be able to visit with the families, usually we go cover this event and to hear the stories that lead them to those tables and as well as the volunteers that bring their children and just have made this a family tradition. It's beautiful to see here in San Antonio. So very special indeed. Very excited. OK, it's 809 and 41 degrees. Coming up, a rediscovered bird thought to be extinct for more than 30, more than 130 years. Wow. And a man discovered a hidden treasure with his metal detector. A medieval ring will soon be going for a huge price. How much? That's next. And taking a live look with live cam right now. All right, the sun is coming up. It's 41 degrees. It's going to be a very, very cold day. But the good thing, no rain just yet. We'll be back with more. 
All right, check this out. A medieval wedding ring could fetch tens of thousands of dollars when someone says, I do, at an auction this month. A British man recently found a near perfect gold ring from the 14th century in a field. How? Well, he was using his metal detector. Historians think it was given to a wealthy bride, very wealthy, by her husband back in 1388. It has a French inscription which translate to I hold your faith, hold mine. How romantic. Experts think it could be worth as much as $47,000 when it's auctioned on November 29th. Okay, a bird thought to be extinct for 140 years has been rediscovered in New Guinea. So this is the black naped pheasant pigeon. It's That's a, a tongue twister. It is. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm back. A bird that was seen for the first and last time in 1882. So according to the nonprofit, Rewild. But now scientists have found it again in the forest of New Guinea. An expedition team spent a month in, the, in Ferguson Island. And just two days before they were scheduled to leave, a camera captured this long lost bird. Scientists still know little about the species, but believe its population is small and decreasing. I love that. He's like, hey, I never left. That's wow. pretty awesome. I, you know, I'm. that's a great bird. I'm still thinking about that engagement, that wedding ring, though. That's a great bird. That's <laughs> a great bird, but let's talk about the, <laughs> let's talk about the money. Let's go let's back see. to the bling. I, the inscription, I hold your faith, hold mine. Hold mine. Man, hold now mine. how language has changed. It's like, hey, boo, here's a ring. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I would hope <laughs> not. I don't think that's, that's probably not I how you're asking I someone to proposed. hold my faith. Hold and I'll hold faith. yours. I know, hold, hold yours. my faith and I'll hold, yeah. I don't I'm, know, I'm ready to butcher I am it. like a hopeless romantic. I live That's for that. That's pretty awesome. Oh my God. Well, it's definitely a cuddle weather out there today. <laughs> Very cold outside with temperatures in the 40s. Take a look at the live radar right now. We've really only got a few light rain showers uh, out south uh, in parts of Wilson County near Sutherland Springs and Stockdale. And then in Carnes County, some uh, showers here as well and into parts uh, near Tilden and George West. But otherwise, it is quiet around San Antonio. Now, we may see a few sprinkles around San Antonio, but generally we are not seeing uh, all that rain that we saw yesterday in the morning hours. Today's going to be an opposite day. Instead of morning rain, we're going to see evening rain uh, today. And you can see, though, that up in Hill Country in Fredericksburg and in Kirk County, we are seeing some uh, very light rain as well there. But in San Antonio, it is nice and quiet this morning, uh, but definitely cold. Now, why are we going to see rain increase today in the evening? Well, because the setup is showing a trough of low pressure, which is going to be bringing lift to the air as it moves to the east and into Texas. So our rain chances are going to increase as this low pressure system gets closer to us. Time frame, best time frame for rain is late tonight and early tomorrow morning. But, you know, some people may be traveling early for the Thanksgiving holiday. And if you're planning on heading west today along I-10, know that there are some areas of wintry precipitation from Ozona to Fort Stockton. So keep an eye on road conditions there. A cold air mass in place with that lift from that low. We are not expecting any kind of wintry precipitation here in San Antonio. And as we look at the future cast, only a 20% chance for a stray shower or sprinkle throughout most of the day today. Temperatures will only be in the 40s, but as we get into this evening, take a look. This is 7 o'clock tonight. Notice how rain chances really start to increase. We'll see about 50% coverage after 5 p.m. tonight, and that'll continue into the overnight hours with even more coverage, about 70% light to moderate rain. Again, we're not concerned about any kind of icy precipitation or anything like that, but this is just going to be cold rain in the overnight hours through early tomorrow too. So another key thing I want you to keep in mind is that by the morning commute tomorrow, or if you're planning on hitting the roads tomorrow for Thanksgiving week, know that it is going to be damp and cold early tomorrow morning. We'll be looking at 70% coverage there of rainfall. And then as we head into the later part of the day tomorrow, our rain chances are going to drop off. Coverage will become a lot less in the afternoon and evening hours. Then by later Monday night, 10 p.m., all that rain is going to be east of us. Although out there today, we are going to stay cold. Cloudy too, overcast skies as we look at the airport. 42 degrees, winds from the northeast at about 
10 miles per hour. It's also very dry out there. Dew points in the 20s. That's chapstick weather. That's extra hand lotion weather because it is just so dry outside. 39 in Kerrville. Good morning in Hondo. It's 43, 42 in New Braunfels, 44 in Del Rio and 44 in Pleasanton. Again, these winds are not as strong as yesterday, but still stout from the north at about 10 miles per hour. So because of that, there's a wind chill. It feels like it's in the 30s across South Central Texas, and it's going to feel like it's in the 30s all day today. As we take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast again, a few sprinkles. Temperatures will only warm into the mid 40s today. It'll be in the mid 40s this afternoon, right around 45 degrees. And again, after 5 p.m., that's when we start to see our rain chances increase. Coverage of uh, scattered showers will increase to 70% overnight tonight into Monday. Something to keep in mind is that tomorrow, damp, cold in the morning, and we're not going to warm up all that much either. Only 45 for the high temperature again tomorrow. Tuesday, we'll see peaks of sun, but it's only going to be enough to warm us up into the 50s. We'll get into the 60s. Wednesday and Thursday. Thanksgiving Day on Thursday, we do expect a front to arrive, although I've got to be honest with you, there's a lot of disagreement in the forecast toward the end of the week. Uh, disagreement in the forecasting models that we look at to, to forecast. So there's still some questions on if we're going to see some rain Thanksgiving and Black Friday and how potent that cold front will be. But you can, I can assure you there's not disagreement amongst us meteorologists here at KSAT in the fact that we're going to keep you updated. And I'll have more more information on that Thanksgiving forecast coming up in the next half hour. Okay, I'm an, I trust our KSAT meteorologist. Oh yeah, I yeah, love the, the the note, the chapstick and the extra lotion. I extra need weather. that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Same, it's the so dry outside. It's mm -hmm. raw. Don't forget your gloves. I needed them last night when we went to light the way. Oh, that was beautiful. All right, time right now, 820, 42 degrees. Speaking of light the way, still ahead, we hear from those in attendance of last night's event hosted by UIW. It's my favorite time of the day. Texas Lottery. Pick three, seven, six, nine, Fireball three, Daily four. Your numbers are six, nine, three, three, Powerball nine. Or Fireball. Is it Fireball it's, or Powerball? It's Fireball. Oh, look, I've been saying it wrong. You That's got it. Why it's you my got favorite. it. You're good. You're good. Catch five, two, 13, 14, 15, 21. Texas Lotto, 8, 10, 18, 24, 29. Let's look at the Powerball numbers. 7, 28, 62, 63, 64. Powerball 10, Power Play three. Good luck. No shave, November, so let's take a look at the leaderboard for our team KSAT. Mike Osterhage still in first place. I challenge our viewers, let's donate to the people who are not in first place, like RJ Marquez or Jonathan Cotto or even Max Massey, who's not even in the top five. Dang. <laughs> trying to get him more money. What is happening, Max Massey? We need to help him get on the top five at least, but don't worry if you haven't had a chance to donate. We still need your help. There's still some time. Check out this QR code on your screen. This will take you to our page, no, to our No Shave page on KSAT.com. And there you can learn, learn more about the initiative and, of course, how to donate. All right. Team Massey. We're, yeah, we're rooting for you, Max. Yeah. I mean, if you were in top five, maybe we'd be rooting for someone else. But, we, yeah, we need to get top five. A nice reminder that he's not. <laughs> <laughs> time right now, 825, 42 degrees. Your holiday shopping might have just gotten a little easier. You won't have to worry about products not being in stock this year. We'll have more on that coming up. And new information coming from the murders of the four college students in Idaho. What one of the victim's sister is revealing. Good morning, welcome back. I'm Alicia Barrera. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, November 20th. Um, funny thing that a lot of people don't know about Alicia and I, we actually lived in the same house at one point. I lived there first in a little casita off of Broadway. Beautiful. And then Alicia moved in. So we shared the same neighbor, John Gambuza. And John asked us to give him a little <laughs> shout out this morning. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy John. Thanksgiving. We you, miss you. And you've done so much for both of us, so we appreciate you. And he asked us to hold hands. He that's did. Why. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, your hands right are really warm, Alicia. Like, Sorry. So warm. No, it's nice. My hands are really cold, Sarah. Because, because it's freezing I out there. I cannot warm up. I oh, mean, my goodness. 40s, but it's feeling like the 30s. Yeah, but now nobody's going to hold my hands. So I will run nice. over there. Don't touch <laughs> me. All right, right now outside, it is cloudy. It is 42. 
Thank you, Sarah. And it is uh, very cold out there. 42 degrees. Dew points are in the 20s, so very dry outside. Chapstick weather and cold. Winds are from the northeast at 10 miles per hour, so it feels like 38 outside. As far as rain goes, no rain in San Antonio. You can see that right here, but we could have a few sprinkles throughout the morning, so about a 20% chance of rain through about noon. Uh, the, however, up in the hill country in Fredericksburg, we are seeing some light rain there as well and in southern Atascosa County and in Carnes County. Uh, today is going to be an interesting day because we're going to see our rain chances increase in the later part of the day. Yesterday we saw half an inch of rain. It is still the driest year to date on record with only 10 inches of rain in the rain gauge. But we may just be able to get past 1917. If all we need is nine hundredths of an inch of rain more to get past them. And guess what? I think we could do that, especially tonight. So when we look at our weather headlines for the day today, cold, a few sprinkles, but tonight we'll actually see rain increase. And if that will lead to a damp morning commute tomorrow on Monday, another cold day though, too. Temperatures are only going to be in the 40s tomorrow again after that rainy start. I'm going to show you the future cast in the full forecast here, and we'll talk about our rain chances increasing tonight. And we need some sun, right? It's been so cloudy. Well, we will see some sun by Thanksgiving, but there's still some questions on whether or not we're going to be getting any rain with a cold front that's expected to arrive on Thanksgiving Day. I've got details ahead coming up in a few minutes. Sarah, Alicia. Sarah, thank you. Several people in San Antonio are in police custody this morning after being detained when police responded to a shots fire call near downtown. It happened around noon near McCullough in East Euclid. Police arrived at a large detached garage and found shell casings and multiple guns. That's when the suspects were detained. Police say one of the men admitted to firing shots from inside that garage. No injuries were reported. And we know now the cause of a deadly crash that happened on I-35. This happened Friday during the 6 o'clock hour. San Antonio police say an 18-wheeler switched lanes to avoid a tow truck on the right shoulder of the highway. The truck's anti-collision braking system did turn on, causing it to slow down. But police say a Ford Focus didn't slow down and actually attempted to go around that 18-wheeler, but instead hit the back of it. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene. Crime Stoppers and San Antonio police are looking for information leading to the suspect accused of killing a man in his own front yard. 48 year old Cornelius Brown died back on November 12th at his home on Castle Guard that is near Riddiman and Eisenhower Roads. San Antonio police say Brown and a neighbor were sitting outside when the suspect allegedly shot at them multiple times and then ran off. The neighbor survived, but Brown died. Anyone with information asked to call this number on your screen right now. Crime Stoppers 210-224-7867. All right, and we're just weeks away from Christmas. We're weeks away from Christmas. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> and the University of Incarnate Word kicked off their 36th annual Light the Way Holiday Festival. Hundreds of people filled the campus to celebrate the official start of the holiday season in San Antonio. Staff and volunteers hung one million lights across the university for more than 50 food and shopping vendors. Also part of the festivities, people say this year's event was unforgettable. I've been coming to Light the Way every single year since I was three years old and bringing my daughter here and letting her watch all the lights turn on, it's, it's amazing. It definitely felt like the Christmas spirit because it's cold outside obviously and uh, all the lights just brought a lot of joy. If you missed last night's event, don't worry, the lights will be up through early January. And we're now learning new information surrounding the murders of four Idaho college students living off campus. Investigators are trying to piece this one together to see exactly what happened the night they were killed in their beds as they hunt for a suspect. ABC Zareen Shaw has the latest. This morning, a sister of one of the four college students found murdered at an off-campus house near the University of Idaho, revealing new clues. So I was able to get a pretty good timeline on Kaylee and Maddie the night of. Um, from about 10, 15 until um, shortly before 3 a.m. 
Olivia Gonzalez says she discovered at least six calls from her sister Kaylee's phone between 226 and 252 made to a boyfriend in the early morning of November 13th. Detectives now saying these phone calls are a part of their investigation. Kaylee's family is firmly standing behind that boyfriend. I know for an absolute fact that he is not a suspect. He is not suspicious. He is 100 percent innocent in this. This new information adding more insight to the police timeline before Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal and Ethan Chapin were stabbed multiple times, likely while sleeping by a Rambo style knife. Kaylee and Madison were last seen at this food truck moments later, leaving with a rideshare driver. Police now saying they do not believe that driver is involved. Police now also releasing this map that is part of the latest search area around the home and asking for new surveillance video. This TikTok showing Kaylee, Madison and Zana inside just weeks before. The two surviving roommates also in the video. We are blurring their faces because police have not identified them, but confirmed the 911 call came in through one of their phones. As for those surviving roommates, police confirmed they did not wake up until later that afternoon. They will be holding a press conference today at 3 p.m. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. One man is dead and several others are injured after a shooting in Avondale, Arizona on the freeway. Police say a suspect was shooting at drivers on the freeway of I-10 before crashing into a motorcyclist yesterday afternoon. There were several witnesses who are now speaking with police about the shooting. The suspect was taken into custody and a weapon was taken by authorities. This is an ongoing investigation. Major retailers say their supply chains are finally almost back to normal operations just in time for Black Friday. Walmart says it secured additional inventory of products popular for the holidays from electronics to home appliances. The CEO of Sam's Club believes their inventory is also in a great position going into the busy Christmas shopping season. The same is true over at Target, where in a reversal from a year ago, the retailer is able to roll out deep holiday discounts once again. Retailers say demand will be the main constraint on sales this season, not the avail availability of the products as seen before during the pandemic. All right, so have you started your Christmas shopping, no. holiday shopping? No. no. Are you more of online or you'll, you'll go to the stores? I'll go to like three stores and I'm like, bam, bam, bam. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, you have a mission. All yeah. right. Have That's you? Good. Uh, no, I always leave it last minute. And I already <laughs> told you about my love for crowds, so it doesn't intimidate me. Oh, my gosh. 42 degrees right now, 837. Days after more than a dozen dogs were rescued from horrible conditions in Jordanton, now what neighbors are saying the city has to do in order to pre for prevent something like this happening again. And next, a look at what's coming up this week on Good Morning America. 42 degrees at 838 this morning. Bundle up if you're headed out for church or breakfast tacos this morning. Make sure your coffee is extra hot. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Good morning. It's a big Sunday on this week as Elon Musk reinstates Donald Trump's Twitter account and the former president launches another presidential campaign. The attorney general has appointed a special counsel to oversee multiple criminal investigations into Trump's actions before and after he left the White House. To discuss it all, I'll be joined by former Speaker of the House Paul Ryan in his first Sunday show interview since he left Congress. And House and Committee Chairman Adam Schiff will be right here in the studio. All that and more coming up on this week. All right, this next story is one we've been following up on. Over two weeks, over more than two weeks ago, more than a dozen dogs were rescued from a home in Jordanton. Public Works is still working to clean up that property because it was definitely a big mess and a big hazard for neighbors. That's right. So the police department described the home as a hoarding situation. Neighbors spoke with KSAT's Lee Waldman about what the city needs to do now in order to keep this from happening ever again. Piles of trash stacked outside of a Jordanton home. We've had a few houses like this and 
you know, this is probably the worst one. On November 4th, more than a dozen dogs were rescued from what the Atascosa Animal Control described as deplorable conditions, something neighbor Ronnie Champion says has been building up for seven years. I'm the one who gets to suffer. My family gets to suffer for it. The neighbors behind them get to suffer for it. Everybody that surrounds this house gets to pay for their actions. Champion says the dogs that were rescued ate several of his pet birds. 30 chickens at least. And um, oh my they killed my milk duck. There's his feathers there. I come in here and it looked like it looked like a massacre. While Champion is happy the city is doing something to clean up the home, he says more needs to be done to keep them from doing this again. The city wants it done, they'll do it. If not, I'll continue to have this mess in my next to my house. With this dumpster filled and still more mess to be cleaned up, workers tell me they're going to have to come back again. We're probably going to have to set it up for either another day or maybe even next week, you know, to finish off what we have what we have here. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. So currently the homeowner is in jail for an unrelated charge. The Jordanton police chief says they have a person of interest in the animal cruelty case against those dogs and that case is still open. All right, and now to weather. I talked about it earlier. I just want some fideo. That's what I'm craving. Oh, my goodness. No, my yes. stomach is growling. Just thinking of like a warm bowl of soup or caldo. Soup, chili, caldo, gumbo, whatever you want. Warm yourself up today because it is going to be cold all day long uh, with wind chills in the 30s. Unlike yesterday, we're starting off the day just plain old cloudy in San Antonio. No real rain to contend with yet, although there could be an isolated sprinkle out there around San Antonio. It is a different story up in the Hill Country, though, where we do have some showers uh, in parts of the Hill Country, even some light wintry mix out near San Angelo. But in uh, Gillespie and in Kirk County near Mountain Home near Ingram and Hunt some very light rain right now and north of Fredericksburg some light rain as well uh, again especially in the northern part of Gillespie County toward Marble Falls to seeing some of that light rain and then south of San Antonio near Kennedy and Carn City some light rain there as well in Carnes County out to DeWitt County Goliad County and in north of uh, Three Rivers there but here in San Antonio it is a quiet start to the day just very cloudy around San Antonio and South Central Texas and cold too. 42 degrees, but because those winds are from the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour, it feels like it's in the 30s this morning and it's going to feel like it's in the 30s all day long. It's 44 in Del Rio. Good morning in Hondo. It's 43, 44 in Pleasanton, 43 in Gonzales, 39 in Kerrville, 38 in Fredericksburg, and it's 41 up in Austin. As we take a wider look across the state of Texas, though, at least it's not in the the teens uh, like it is up in the panhandle. It's 28 degrees in Abilene and 34 in Dallas. We are going to see our rain chances increase today because of this trough of low pressure, which is currently working its way eastward. It's going to be pushing east throughout Texas throughout the day today and with it approaching us in south central Texas, we'll see our rain chances increase. You know, some people are traveling this weekend as uh, we head into Thanksgiving week across I-10 there from Ozona to Fort Stockton and then out towards San Angelo. There is the potential for some wintry precipitation as you can see right now, uh, but most of the roads should be okay uh, as the ground is still pretty warm. As we look at our future cast today, uh, again, only a sprinkle possible through most of the day, 20% coverage and temperatures are going to stay cold because we're going to be locked into the cloud cover generally in the low 40s. However, after 5 p.m. tonight, you'll notice how the radar starts to blossom here in the future cast. We'll be seeing 50% coverage of some light to moderate rain after 5 p.m. So after sunset and then into the overnight hours that increases to 70% coverage. So a lot of people are going to be getting some light to moderate rain in the overnight hours. We could easily pick up another quarter to half inch of rain. And as we look at early tomorrow morning for the morning commute, it will still likely be raining around San Antonio. So please take some extra caution for your morning commute tomorrow. Pack a little extra patience. There are probably going to be some crashes on the road because of uh, the uh, the rain on the roads. But then by about Monday afternoon, we will see the coverage decrease. And by Monday evening, rain will be east of San Antonio. So just to summarize everything I said there, only an isolated uh, sprinkle possible during the day today. But tonight, into tomorrow. That's when we see more widespread rain ramp up around South Central Texas. And then Monday night, Tuesday, we'll be done with the rain.
All in all, today is going to be a cold day. Temperatures will only top off right near 45 degrees. And with that wind from the north throughout the day at 10 to 15, it's going to feel like it's in the 30s all day long. And after sunset at 537, that's when we're going to start to see our rain chances increase. It's going to be a cold and damp start to your day tomorrow. Let's look ahead to Thanksgiving. All right, there's still a lot of questions around Thanksgiving as far as this cold front goes. One of the forecasting models that we look at is, is uh, going back and forth and disagreeing about what is actually going to happen as far as rainfall goes on Thursday. But what we can say right now is that it should generally be at least in the 60s on Thursday for Thanksgiving and a cold front will probably move through. Right now we're only going isolated rain both tomorrow, both Thursday and Friday for Black Friday, but please continue to check back in with us. We keep that KSAT Weather Authority app updated when we're not on television. And of course, we will uh, keep you posted as much as possible and tell you what the forecast looks like as we get closer to Thursday and Friday of this upcoming week. So I'm going to Florida this week for Thanksgiving. I was going to say, yeah, a lot of people, I mean, already hitting the roads or taking their flights yeah. to go visit family or family coming into town. So definitely we can expect a lot of traffic probably tomorrow morning. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. And with the rain, it's not going to be so pretty out there. Okay. Everyone be careful. Be safe. Have a good Thanksgiving week. But we'll be here all week. I'll mm -hmm. be here tomorrow morning. Working hard, you know. <laughs> 42 degrees, 849. We'll be right back. It's No Shave November. Let's take a look at this leaderboard. We've been saying this all morning. Mike Osterhage, we love him, but we want someone to beat him. That way we can raise money and someone like yep. maybe Max Massey just takes a huge lead. Okay, so the goal is $20,000. Right now they're 53% of the way there with $10,681. $10, okay, so Max Massey isn't too far off. He's only $10. Um, shy from beating out RJ. So he's so at 645. 645. Come on. Come on. Someone guys. donates $15 also, and that way you can I'm take a RJ off of there. We're only 53% of the way and we only We've got have one week left. One week. Yeah. That's a lot of money to raise. We can do week. it. They did it last year. Come on, team. We if, can do it. If we could grow beards for this, we would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, right. and, I, and I think we would probably wait, raise double the money as well. And there's still time <laughs> to donate, you guys. So check out this QR code on your screen. It'll take you to our no shave page on ksat.com and there you can learn more but importantly also to donate All right okay so last night we we well last night i was at the grupo firme <laughs> concert over at the alamo dome Thirty-seven thousand tickets i believe is what these guys were able to accomplish and let me tell you when you think of a mexican fiesta this this is it this is the music this is the vibe it was amazing. Alicia, can we just talk about your great seats? Because this is oh your video. Wow. Yeah, this was floor seats, man. Dream come true. Um, you have a favorite it, song of theirs? Uh, yes. Uh, ya Superame, which is like their number one song. Yeah. Um, but it's just great. I just want to say for this type of music, when you're talking about Banda, regional Mexican music, for them to make it and pack an Alamo Dome is really unheard of. Yeah. I mean, these are the same guys that oversold at Cowboys a few years ago, and then they were at a different club even more years back. So to see them, you know, pack the Alamo Dome, this is great. The Alamo Incredible. Dome is a tough one to pack, mm -hmm. and they did it. It Way was to awesome. Go. Way to go, Grupo Firme. It was a great time, and to everyone out there, I hope they had just as much fun. And just as cold today as it was yesterday, but we're going to flip flop our rain. Rain will be uh, increasing in the evening hours rather than in the morning. One thing to note, though, is that the wind chill is going to be pretty cold today. Temperatures will only top off at 45 and it'll feel like it's in the 30s all day long with winds from the t northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. As we look at the day today, a few sprinkles through noon and then after 4 p.m. we see our rain chances increase again overnight tonight, about a 70 percent coverage of rainfall that'll continue continue into tomorrow morning as well. So a cold, damp and blustery start to the day for your Monday. Seeing a little bit of sun Tuesday and Wednesday, but not all that much more. We will warm up, however, into the 60s, which for some is a welcome change for Thanksgiving. Guys. Absolutely. And the holiday the holiday lights are up and so is the Christmas radio station. So it's official. It's official. You guys have a great Sunday.